friends, it's Tracy from Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in a few months, um, but there's been a lot of stuff going on. So I thought I'd talk about the books that I've read this year. I think I have them all here. I might not, but I'll tell you about some changes that's been going on in my life. For those that are new, um, I'm a mom, I have six children, one of my, my eldest, uh, she's almost 27, she lives out west, but I have her grandbaby here for the summer, uh, and um, yeah, anyways, I was busy all morning, I dropped kids off to day camp, one of my little boys is still asleep, it's morning time, but in uh, addition to Violet, we have a Boris. <laughs> There's Boris right here. He's my fuzzy baby boy. He's almost five months old. He's not quite, he's almost as big as Violet though, but Violet is a kind of petite standard poodle. Um, I think he's going to be gigantic, but that's okay. The bigger, the better, the better. You know what I mean? So he's full of energy. And of course these guys start playing as soon as I turn the camera on. And I want to do this um, fairly quickly, but there's some other changes going on. Um, over the past couple of months, the big COVID hit our home and not everybody got it, but um, I got it. My eldest son, his girlfriend, and another one of my children. Luckily, nobody else got it, so that was a thing. Another thing was uh, we have a, another house, and we sold that. Um, not this house that we live in, but our old house. That was an ordeal to deal with. Um, Boris is a new addition. That was another exciting ordeal to, you know, bring into the home and adjust to and everything like that and it's summer break now so all the kids are home they're doing day camps this week but uh yeah just a lot a lot oh and I went out west to pick up my grandbaby so I was gone out there for about a week not quite um so just a lot just a lot going on but I'm hoping to get back on track with my uh, tea time videos um, I do have a regular channel, it's called Nova Scotia Living, feel free to check it out, but no pressure whatsoever. But I just thought I'd talk about some of the books that I'm having. I'm not having a cup of tea because it is a hot day here in Nova Scotia. I'm going to have some sparkling carbonated water, mandarin orange, and these guys will run around while we talk about books for a minute. So these are in no particular order. I think this is all the ones I've read. I can't remember for sure. And if I've talked about any of these beforehand, I forget. I, I forget. But so anyways, let's just start right off. Um, one of the books I read was Under the Dome by Stephen King. I'm not going to go into great detail about these books because we'll be here forever. But this is one of the Stephen King's. I guess there was a TV miniseries. I never watched it, but um, I wanted to jump in. And it's about this town that almost gets a glass bubble over top of it. It's unbreakable. They tried missiles to break it and everything like that. So uh, the people left in the town, um, there's corrupt cops. There's uh, not really gangs, but um, power hungry people and resources. So it's quite a dramatic but interesting world and the ending was quite it's not what I was expecting it wasn't like a bad ending but I'm just like well that's that's kind of bizarre but yeah anyways I recommend it it's a long book it's it might seem kind of slow to some people it took me a few days to read that because that is a big book and it wasn't like oh action-packed the whole way through it's more of you get to know all the characters and things like that so let me know if you read it or any of these books that I'm going to talk about. Another one I read just not long ago while I went on my trip um, was claimed by L. Kennedy. I've never read anything by this author before. I have read, oh just a second, the, I have TV for dogs on but it's on a commercial. Yeah, anyways I've never read anything by her. Somebody talked about this book and I guess it's a series and it's a like dystopian it's after the world fell apart and there's a compound of people that are protected but it's run by corrupt people and one of the or the sister of the guy that's in charge of this compound city place um 
wants to escape because it's an iron fist is where they're at and uh, she wants to escape because it's a terrible place to be but anybody that lives out this out of this compound place it's like um, I forget what they're called just not deserters but outlaws I guess well it's an outlaw thing but it's dangerous not living in the compound because there's marauders there's gang people there's it's like a desolate place scavengers stuff like that anyway she hooks up with these I think there's four guys um, and they're ruthless ruthless people but she has kind of a little relationship with a couple of them and I think the premise was good it could turn out to be really something but it was more fluffy than I thought and I'm not used to a whole lot of fluffy sometimes I thought this would be a little more darker but I mean it was good I don't think I'm gonna continue on with the series so I'm not gonna bother just not didn't have the edge I was hoping for so all right you two bozos simmer down all right another one I read is Sparrow Beckett this is the first book of a duet I haven't read the second one yet but uh, this guy god I read this a while ago what's his name can't even think of his name he's kind of a recluse he was sent away as a child because he was a troubled child his parents were I think over in the UK or something and they just treated him poorly <coughs> but they're from wealth and they set him up in this giant like mansion place <coughs> oh excuse me but since he was like four or five um and just set up caretakers for him anyways he uh he doesn't like to go out he will go out if he has to he's antisocial. he's very very grumpy and uh just particular um he does have a brother it's not his actual brother it's one of the caretakers sons that he grew up with um and uh the caretaker this old older lady i forget what her name is too uh was looking for people to come and be his companion not so much like in a relationship but just to have somebody in his life to talk to and help him go do this and that anyways uh this young woman is hired and um it goes from there it's pretty dark <coughs> excuse me it's pretty kinky um i enjoyed it and i do plan on reading the other book i do have it but um uh, yeah it's not like a jump oh i need to go read that right away but i do want to read it it's the dominant bastard book one so that one feral king series or whatever I forget what the second one's called but I enjoyed it and I will read the second one um, another one I read was the secret of Crickley Hall by James Herbert this is a big one too um, this is a haunted house book and it's old it's older I don't know when it was first put out but there's a mini series on Amazon Prime which I haven't watched yet but copyright 2006 so not that old well when you think of it it's kind of but 2006 seems like yesterday to me um this happens over in the uk somewhere as i forget i read this a while ago and this family they had two children the little boy passes away this isn't a spoiler this is right at the beginning of the book uh doesn't pass away he gets kidnapped and never to be seen again and uh, he was cherished obviously he was a child in a small family and um, I forget what the father does he has some high paying job and mom was a stay at home mom so you know they're just crushed but the father sees the mother kind of breaking down since the disappearance of her son and he decides to book like a holiday retreat that summer this is months after to thought to get away it might help and they rent this giant old I don't want to say it's almost like a castle but it's not a castle manor some sort of manor so a great big stone place I think that's what it is in my mind and uh, <clears throat> they get there they have a little dog too that doesn't want to enter this house at all but this manor has a history which they didn't know uh, it used to be kind of like a boarding school or a place during the war when they would send kids out of the city to stay with other places this is what this manor was and there was a tragedy that happened there there was abuse that happened there and um, anyways while they're there the mother keeps hearing 
the sound of her missing child, the voice, the voice of her missing child, and she's, she thinks she's going crazy, and that she thinks her son might be there, and things go bump in the night, and things like that. It's not a scary book. It was kind of a lazy read. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't like a heart-pounding kind of horror. It was a nice, lazy, comfort kind of, if you're not in a rush to read, just like you're walking around this old, cold, stone manor. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a slow, creepy kind of read. And I enjoyed it. I did. I'm glad I read it. And I bought it secondhand, and it was fine. Another one I read was Credence by Penelope Douglas. I've seen this all over book two before, and it was, like, very taboo. And, it, I mean, it is. And people rave about this book. And I enjoyed this book, but it's... I, I enjoyed it. I did. Um, this young woman, I think, like, just out of school or just something like that, her parents end up passing at the very beginning of this book. They end up killing each other, like, double suicide kind of thing because I think it's the mother that has cancer or something, so they decide to die and, and just left her. I mean, they didn't really care for her too much anyways. They were very well off. But, so she had everything she ever wanted, but she just wanted her parents' love, and they never gave it to her, and they decided to kill her themselves without even talking to her, and she has no family, none. So, a uh, step-uncle that she, I don't think, ever met comes forward and says, come live with us, or you can come live with us in the mountains somewheres. Um, that's very isolated during the winter because it, the roads are all cut off during the winter. I forget. I forget. I read this a few months ago. And, um, he has, um, two boys. One is kind of a wild child. Well, he, they're older than her, but he's <clears throat> kind of a roughneck. Like, he goes out in the woods and I don't want to say feral because he's not. He's very, you know, not, but he likes to get his hands dirty. The other one is, uh dirt bike rider or something competitive and they fix up bikes and stuff and that's how they make their money and then her step uncle so no blood relation but she ends up having kind of a relationship with all of them and at the end she does end up with one of them all right ding dongs <clears throat> um she ends up having a relationship with all of them at some point in this book and it was good it was good i'm glad i read it but you know for goodness sakes, look at these two. He gets into their water bucket and thinks it's a swimming pool. And he's like five times the size. Anyways, I would recommend it if you're into a taboo. It's not the most taboo that I've ever read, for sure. And it was an easy read. But some people might find, find it uncomfortable because of the relation. But no blood relation at all. And, yeah. Another one I read was like Porno for Psychos by Raph James White. These are like little either poems or short stories. More of short stories. Yeah, I don't think there's a poem. Yeah, there is a poem. Okay, one at the end. I got this because I read his book, uh, The Resurrectionist, last year. And I enjoyed that. It's a horror book. Um, and I just thought this. It's very tiny. I don't generally read short stories. Um, but it's very graphic and gross and, uh, splatterpunkish. Like, there's extreme, extreme things in this, like, gory, sexual, torturous sort of things. And I read that one. Um, it's certainly not for everybody's taste. It, things like this are more hilarious to me. Uh, they're not, I certainly would never want anything like this in person, but they're so outrageous you gotta laugh at it because it's like, are you serious? Like, that's absolutely insane. That's what this is. And I'm glad I, I'm glad I read it. Uh, people rave about, rave about Wrath of James White. And so far I've liked everything that I've read of his. Um, I'll probably pick up something else another time when I'm in the mood for something like that. But yeah, if you're into it, it's really not everybody's cup of tea. It's not a dark romance at all. It's horror grotesquely is what it is so read that one um i ended up reading oh, there's the other one i went on a penelope douglas kick i read the devil's night series those those 
because everybody would talk about these too. And this is like credence for me. It was good and I'm glad I read it. I enjoyed it while I read it. But some people, this is their favorite. And, you know, it's not my favorite, but I'm glad I read it. It's about uh, four boys, well, young men. They're out of high school. But while they were in high school, they would do this devil's night and do pranks all over the town that they were in. And uh, in each book, there's a different girl. But the very first book, which is Corrupt, that one. Uh, Michael and Erica, uh, Erika, yeah, um, she used to hang around, like, tag along with them. She was actually engaged to the head guy in this book, Michael, younger brother, not engaged, but expected to marry. These guys are all wealthy, wealthy white guys, you know what I mean? Like, their family's big, and, uh... In the first book, three of the other boys uh, are sent to jail and they blame Rika. And uh, the story goes from there. It's, it is dark. It's, again, not the darkest I've read. It is dark. There's a lot of bullying and tormenting um, and just destroying of lives. But by the end of it, there's a happily ever after. Like, it all comes up. But you do got to read these in order. Or you should read these in order because there's an underlying story that goes all across it. So um, there's Corrupt, I forget which order. I, there was one I liked the best out of it. Uh, yeah, okay, I think, it's, uh, I think it's Hideaway. I think it's that one that I like the best. But a lot of people I think like Kill Switch the best. Yeah, but I like this one the best out of all of them. And there's a novella that goes at the very end of this. I don't have it physically, but I read that on uh, Kindle, I think. I just have the app on my phone. But anyways, I would recommend it if you're just starting off with dark romance. This would be a good starting point, I think, in my opinion, um, because there is a lot of bullying and there is, in the books, there is some murder and killing and betrayal and uh, things like that. So, I read that one. Uh, Alright, what are we at? 18 minutes. Okay, The Truth About Heartbreak. There's another book and I have it, but I haven't read it yet. This is about, let me just, my mind is muddled right now. It's about River I read this and Everett. Um, and um, Everett's friend, I can't think of his name right off the bat, uh, is a very wealthy family and they ended up adopting this foster child River as a early teen um, and brought them brought her into the house so Everett is I can't think of his name the son of the people that adopted River if you're picking up what I'm laying down um, and so this is like a brother's best friend romance kind of forbidden kind of and um she she was is really withdrawn at first like she's never had a stable home she's been a foster child all her life and um but this family truly do does love her and want her there and over the span of a few years she gets more and more infatuated with Everett. Everett kind of has an infatuation with her and protecting her as a little sister even though he's the friend of the she, he's not the actual adoptive brother and um, it goes from there that's a little it's a little dark um, it's uh, there's cheating in this book um, it's an emotional kind of an emotional toying around of different things Again, they're just young, so um, it's not as dark, but I, I enjoyed it. It's a, good, it's a good read, a good drama, romance, forbidden, uh, toying around of emotions. And yeah, Be Celeste, I read that one. Um, I, I would recommend it for sure. Yeah, I would. Okay, uh, another Penelope Douglas, I read Bully. Um, people talk about this one a lot too or talked about it a lot before and I read it I wanted to see what the big whoop was um, 
it's a bully romance, a high school romance, which I'm like, I've come to realize I'm not so much into young people's, this is an adult book, but young people's stories so much, unless I'm reading a child's book. Um, I enjoyed this. This was good. Um, it was um, two people in high school. The, they grew up together like they were neighbors, so they were childhood friends. Um, the girl went away for her, like, <clears throat> almost her last year of school over to France for a year and came back. She wanted to leave because um, the main boy in this started bullying her in high school and she didn't know why. And extreme bullying, like pretty bullying, turned the whole school against her sort of thing. So she wanted to leave and go to France and do school there for a year and then she came back for her last graduating year because she wanted to graduate with her friends and stuff. And the bullying continued. She thought she'll go away, she can come back, it'll get better. And it doesn't. It doesn't get better. Uh, but it's about their relationship. He can bully her, but nobody else can bully her. And um, eventually this story, you find out why he's like that um, and how how they kind of come together again at the end of the book because you know there's there's some dark things in this it's not super dark but I'm glad I read it and I just wanted to give everybody talks about Penelope Douglas and I wanted to give her books a good go and I have and I like them um, I will probably look at some more when I get a chance but I have a million books to read but yeah I have it I read it and I enjoyed it um, I can't remember if I talked about any of these books or not, so I'll do it quick. Um, if you had watched any of my older videos, I read a lot of T.M. Frazier books. Like, I read the King series and absolutely adored it. She's an automatic buy for me now. Devoured the whole thing like candy. And, um, I read, I bought all her backlist stuff. I'm in the middle of reading some of those now, but... I finally read all of the King series. Um, I don't know which order they go in. And if I talked about these already, I forget. But I read Rage. This isn't technically in the King series, but it has characters from the King series in it, like outside characters. And Up in Smoke. Really enjoyed these. Uh, two thumbs up for me. Um, yeah, Rage is, uh, she looks like a young a sat like a young little girl she's not she's like of age and she is a efficient killer um, and uh, she <clears throat> is directed by her handler who is smoke to go and keep an eye on this guy um, because he is the son of a rival motorcycle club president or something something like that anyways very good very good um, and then he is Rage's Smoke, and he is like a handler of different things, and has a relationship with, I might have talked about this, a uh, girl who her father ended up betraying him and the person he works for, and stole a whole bunch of money. So Smoke is on the hunt for this girl's father. Can't find him, but finds her, so she he ends up taking her in, in hopes of her leading him back to her father and it's their relationship and T.M. Frazier books are quite dark they're very action-packed they're engaging and interesting and um, I love everything about them I really do so that one this one is goes all before the King series I read it after and I don't know if she like the King series prequel she might have made this after the King series and went back and wrote the prequel. Um, this is darker than some of the other King series books. I find there's uh, rape in this and there's betrayal or thought of betrayal and murder and stuff. This is about, I read this a while ago, Jake and Abby. And you see Jake and Abby in some of the King series, but they're not like prominent players in that book series. Um, Jake had a kind of a rough growing up. His father owned a used car dealer. No, a junkyard. Junkyard. And um, his, I don't know what, I think his mother died. And his father was an alcoholic, raging alcoholic. And he ends up leaving at age like 13 and making a name for himself because he was a, his father was about to kill him when he left. 
but he got away and he comes back later on in life um, his father is sick and ill and he kind of is doing the junkyard thing while his father's home um, and Abby is ha was a foster child um, as a child had terrible horrible experiences this is why I'm saying it's very dark it's very dark um, and he, she ends up going to live with this grandmother that she never even knew. And she takes her in with open arms and truly loves her and takes care of her and lets her be who she is. Anyways, her grandmother dies and the house that they are renting is going to be taken, taken back. Child services shows up. She runs away and hides in this junkyard. Um, by this time, she's like a later teen. And lo and behold, Jake finds Abby and... It goes from there, but there, it's it's lots of triggers in this one. Lots of triggers. And then I read the novella that goes after that book. It's not necessary to read this at all. At all, really. After I read it, I'm like, it wasn't needed, but I enjoyed it. It just added a little more to the story. What happened at the end of this, it showed them a little ways down the road. And, um, yeah, it's not necessary, but I'm glad I had it. So I read it kind of like all as one big book. Like if this had it all been together, I just read it all like that. Um, yeah, almost done, I think. <clears throat> I read Hell House by Richard Matheson, and I can't remember if I did a video on this, but I really enjoyed this. It's old, it's dated, it's very kind of sexist a bit. But this is a haunted house uh, story, not really scary, but straight up horror it is um this has a group of people coming to this house um i think there's a psychic uh empath a skeptic and somebody else or something and they agreed to go and stay there for a bit i forget now i forget now exactly how long not long um, and s things start happening. Uh, the history of this house is revealed and it's very dark. It's very dark in regards to what has happened here and the sick things that went on in this house. Uh, but that's what I liked about it. Yeah. So I do recommend this. I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah. Oh, another book I read by him was I Am Legend. I don't think I have it here. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I know there's a movie out. The book is certainly different than the movie, but I would recommend that too. I like that. But, um, uh, yeah. Okay. Another one in the T.M. Frazier series. This is, this is part of the King. Well, it's not technically part of the King series, but one of the characters in the King series, Preppy, this is his little brother. And, uh, this is his story with, I forget what the girl's name is. I don't know, but uh, Doe. Yeah, Doe. I think. Those guys are still playing out there. Uh, I think it's Doe. Anyways, she was in a, kind of a broken marriage. Well, she had a stable marriage. She loved her husband, but he was kind of straight-laced. She grew up in, a, I think, a wealthy family, a, kind of a wealthy family, and had a company. When she got married, he kind of took over the company, and it was doing well, but she did a lot of the legwork and stuff, too. Turns out uh, he was ripping off the family. Uh family business and was going to jet and she was left left home uh yeah anyways she's kind of an alcoholic like she didn't have any friends she would stay home um and just drink she you know and her her husband wasn't ever mean to her but he he planned on just leaving her and let her take the blame for this anyways he goes missing the money that was taken, um, people come looking for her, and this is where these guys' paths cross. Um, but it's very interesting. It's not my favorite out of these books, but I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the story. Uh, I would definitely 
if you're going to read T.M. Frazier, read them all, really. It all comes together. It all comes together in the end. And then I read um, the King series, uh, well, it's a King series novella. And this is after everybody's all together <coughs> and sorted and um, there's some drama and a big storm coming, raging. Again, not necessary to read. It really isn't. I need another sip. Not necessary to read, but I wanted to read every single last word that she has written in regards to these guys. Um, and it's, oh, I was going to say it's cute. It's not cute. There's, there's drama and action in this, but it's only short, so there you go. <clears throat> there you go. Another one I read was Clive Barker, The Great and Secret Show. Again, I forget if I talked about this book before in an old video. This is supposed to be a trilogy. Uh, this is the first book. The second book is Everville, and I have it. I haven't read it yet. And then the third book is not out, and I don't know if it'll ever be written. It's over 20 years, and the third book hasn't been out. And I can't put this into word words. This is the first book I've read. No, second book I've read by Clive Barker. And um, it's just bizarre, but so engaging. I read this a while ago, so I can't even talk about it. You'll have to look at other people's videos to talk about, uh, to hear what this is about. But I do want to read the second book, and I have it. I bought it secondhand, and these are older. 1989? Yeah, 1989. But people say this is, if you want Clive Barker, this is the most Clive Barker-ish book there is. It's it's kind of strange, but uh, it's like if you were high on something and everything was weird. Like, weird. That's what this is, but it's a really, really, really good story, and I'm glad I read it. The last one I have here in the pile, and I think that's all I've read. I can't remember. I'm in the middle of some other books right now. So I didn't put the them in this um, this list was the haunting of Ashburn House because so many people talked about this book to say it was scary and I like to give myself a good scare. I love horror. I love dark, twisted stories, but I love horror too. Well, that all goes hand in hand. And uh, this is the first Darcy Coates book I read, and I enjoyed it. It wasn't scary at all for me. It was kind of a cozy read, I guess. Um, it's a haunted house story. This young lady is desolate and doesn't have any money and she inherits this house from her aunt that passed away. And the house is old and kind of decrepit a bit, but she has no other choice because she has no place to go. And she goes and strange things start happening. She doesn't have a car. She doesn't have anything like that. So she has to walk everywhere. So you get to see some of the town that she's in and you get little snippets from people in the town of what her aunt used to be like because she didn't know her aunt um and strange things start happening noises happen lights show you know things like that it was good it it wasn't a scary book at all but um i like the crickly hall book more than this book but i'm glad i read it because so many people talked about this and i probably will read more darcy coates um she read I guess writes a whole bunch of haunted house ones, but yeah, yeah, I think that's everything that I've read. Um, I think if not, I'll put it in another video, but I just thought I can't sit down and do individual videos about all these books. I'd be here forever and I can't do that. I do have a lot of books to haul when I went away on my trip. I came back with a suitcase full of books cause I hardly brought any clothes and I have some other books too so I'll probably do a few haul videos if you like haul videos check back another time so anyways I'm gonna say peace love and happiness today and every single day please like share and subscribe if you, you so choose but if not no big deal no harm no foul it's all good it's all good so anyways uh, with that I'm gonna say have a good night or have a good morning and I will maybe see you in a few days bye Boink.